In this video, we're going to look at using the sine rule to find missing lengths and angles in non-right angle triangles. In the last video, we looked at which of the two rules that we needed to use given certain situations. We had the cosine rule and the sine rule. We used the sine rule to find missing lengths when we had two known angles and one side. We used the sine rule to find missing angles when we had two known side lengths and one angle. In this video, we're going to work through some very basic examples of finding missing lengths and angles. In the next video, we're going to look at doing the same with the cosine rule, and then we will combine the two for more challenging problems in a later video. We'll also consider in a later video the ambiguous case for the sine rule. So let's go ahead and work through some basic problems. So what we're going to do is look at using the sine rule to find a missing length. Let's start with a missing length. What we're going to have is the following. We'll have some triangle, and I'll just go ahead and label the triangle up. We've got now a triangle. And remember, we can still use the trig ratios and Pythagoras if we have a right angle triangle. I'm going to label this angle now A, and I'm going to use a capital. If this is capital A, the opposite side is lowercase a. We'll call this one now B, so this is capital B. This is going to be lowercase b. If we have this angle here and we've got capital C, this is lowercase c. The sine rule is given as A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which in turn is equal to C over sine C. We will never use all three of these. I simply like to focus on these ones right here. So what I'm going to do is draw up a triangle and we're going to find now a missing length in this. So what we'll have is something looking like so. So this is just, let's just draw a quick sketch. This is not massively accurate, but it'll give us some idea. I'm going to say now that this angle right here is going to be, we'll take that to be, let's go for 79 degrees. If we take this one just here, let's say that that's going to be, we'll go for 46 degrees. I'm going to have 11 centimeters here, and I want to find this length, which I'm going to call X. So if we look at this now, all I can say at this stage is x over the sine of 46 will be equal to 11 over the sine of 79. a over sine a is equal to b over sine b. So I'm going to write this now as x over the sine of the angle, which is sine 46, must be equal to 11 over the sine of 79. The algebra from here is very straightforward as we simply need to multiply both sides by sine of 46. So 11 sine of 46 over the sine of 79 will give us now this length x. We can use the calculator to find that and check in that it's in degrees mode. So we've got a little d here. If not, shift mode 3. We're simply going to write in here 11, or you could put 11 times, 11 sine of 46 divided by the sine of 79 degrees. So if we just put that in, that's going to give me 8.06. So I'll say now that 8.06, uh, so we'll say that this is going to be 8.1. And if this was in centimetres, we put centimetres, and that's given to one decimal place. So I've simply used the sine rule to find a missing length. So just set it up, we only need to. This one over the sine of this one is equal to this one over the sine of this one. Um, a question of the students often then baffle themselves over is trying to find this angle here. Remember, the sum of all of the angles in a triangle equal 180, so we do 180 minus 79 minus 46. Okay, let's now look at finding a missing angle. So jotting this down, missing angle using the sine rule. So missing angle. We can use exactly the same formula here. I prefer to invert it and write it now as sine A over A is equal to sine B over B. It's entirely up to you. It just makes solving the equation slightly easier. 
So let's just draw another sketch up. I'll take another triangle and we'll just put some dimensions on this. What we'll have, let's do something like this. Let's just put that there and then we'll have that one and then we will do something like that. So here's a triangle, hopefully that'll meet, that'll do. Let's just sketch this up. So what I'm going to do is put on some values. Let's say that this, uh, we'll take this to be, uh, let's say that's 20 degrees. So we've got 20 degrees just here. We've got now, let's say that's 17 and we'll take this to be 17 centimeters. We'll take this one to be uh, 6.8 centimeters and we want to find this angle right here, which I'm going to call theta. Generally speaking, we call the angle X or theta. So what I want to do is work out theta. So using this particular approach, I can take now theta and say that the sine of theta divided by 17 will be equal to the sine of 20, so the sine of 20 divided by 6.8. So at this stage, I can get an expression for sine theta, which we need to solve for, and multiplying both sides by 17, 17 sine of 20 divided by 6.8. Um, in, in later videos, we are going to look at the ambiguous case, but for now, we're just going to focus on these triangles that we've got. Um, so let's just put this in, 17 sine of 20, and then we're going to divide this now by 6.8. And that gives me that sine theta is equal to 0 0.855 and so on and so forth. So if that isn't the size of the angle, sine theta is equal to 0 0.85 dot 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 dot. We saw in the last video that we need to take the inverse sine of this quantity to find now the angle. So that's what we're going to do and we can look at that just here. So if I do that, take in now shift sine, inverse sine of my answer that will give me now the angle and it's 58.7. So theta is going to be equal to 58.7 dot, 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 dot. And I think it's 58.8 and that is to one decimal place. So let's just check I've rounded that 58.8 to one decimal place. So in later videos, we will look at uh, the ambiguous sign rule, but for now, hopefully that gives you some idea of how to find a missing length and a missing angle using the sign rule. So let's go ahead and work through a few. As stated with this, you don't have to uh, transpose this. You can just write it like so. I just think it's a lot easier to go this way because if we had it the other way, we'd have 17 over sine theta was going to be equal now to 6.8. So 6.8 over the sine of the 20 degrees. So we'd need to solve for sine theta. So we'd need to multiply it by the sine theta multiply by the sine 20 and divide by the 6.8. It just makes it easier to use this particular way as we've got less manipulation. So let's have a look at the moment. For each triangle, find the unknown side marked A, B or C. So if we look at this one right here, all I'm going to do is consider now the opposites. So if I take this one, I've got now this known side, I've got one known angle, I want A and I've got the other known angle. So if we want to find a missing length using the sine rule, we need two known angles and one side length. So I'm going to say now that A over the sine of 70 degrees will be equal to B, which is going to be my 5, over the sine of 60 degrees. Multiplying both sides by this quantity, remember sine of 70 degrees is just a number, we can say 5 sine of 70 over the sine of 60 will be equal to that length A. So if we do that, let's go ahead and do that. So we've got 5 sine of 70, so 5 sine 70, and we're going to divide that now by the sine of 60 degrees. So always check that you're in uh, degrees mode, little d here, rather than radians, um, and that's going to give us 5.4253. So we'll say now that's just going to be 5.4 to one decimal place. So 5.4 units to one dp. So we will be given a level of accuracy to shoot for in the exam. If I've got now integer values, I generally go for now one uh, level of accuracy higher. Okay, let's look at another one, see if there's anything uh, interesting in this one. Um, let's look at this one now. We need to find B. So what we could do is look at B. B over the sine of 80 will be equal to 6.5 over the sine of 45 degrees. So nice and straightforward. Let's write this in. So we have B 
over the sine of 80 degrees will be equal to 6.5 over the sine of 45 degrees. So sine of 45 degrees. So we can say that B is equal to 6.5 sine of 80 degrees divided by the sine of 45 degrees. Straight for a calculator with that. Let's do that. So 6.5. So 6.5, and we've got the sine of 80, so 6.5 sine of 80 divided by sine of 45 degrees. So sine of 45 degrees, and that gives us now 9.05. So 9.05, and that is going to be units, and that's given to 2dp. So just looking at different levels of accuracy. So with all of these, these are relatively straightforward. If we look at this one right here, we'll quickly go through them. C over the sine of 110 will be equal to 8.3 over the sine of 15. With this one, A over the sine of 75 will be equal to 7.2 over sine of 45. A over the sine of 37 will be equal to 7.9 over the sine of 95. A over the sine of 68 will be equal to 4.5 over the sine of 44. So we're using now the sine rule to find missing lengths in non-right angle triangles. Let's now go ahead and look at finding a missing angle. So with these ones, we want to find a missing angle. And in this case, we've got theta. So what I like to write in general is that sine A over A is equal to the sine of B over B. So if we look, we're after theta. So what I'm going to write is that the sine of theta over the 4.2 will be equal to the sine of 66 degrees over the 5.1. So all I need to do is multiply up. So sine theta will be equal to 4.2 multiplied by the sine of 66 degrees divided by 5.1. I've just simply now drawn across. The sine of uh, theta over 4.2 must be the same as the sine of 66 over 5.1. Uh, and let's just go ahead and, and do that. So we could just put this straight through a calculator and do now shift the inverse sign of this quantity right here. In an exam, I would show now the steps in between, but as we hopefully are fairly cool with this, we can just plug it in. So with this, I don't have to close my bracket off if I'm being lazy, uh, and that is gonna give us 48.8. So that's 48.8, so 48.8 degrees to one dp. So that seems fairly logical, given now what it looks like. Some of these are never um, never to scale as, as such, uh, but that looks pretty good from there. Okay, let's just do one more. Let's take this one here. We want theta, so we can say now that the sine of theta over the 9.4 will be equal now to the sine of 99 over the 11.2. So sine theta is going to be equal to 9.4 sine of 99 degrees divided by the 11.2. So theta, let's just put this in and I'll just write it here. Theta is going to be equal to the inverse sine or if you like arc sine or on the calculator sine to the minus one, 9.4 sine of 99 divided by 11.2. Remember sine of 99 is just a number. So let's just put this in. Let's work out what that is. Let's get a value for sine theta. Remember, for these, sine theta cannot be one uh, greater than 1. So let's put this on sine 99, and we're going to divide that by 11.2. Okay, that gives me 0 0.82, and so on and so forth. Shift sine, my answer. This will give me the angle. 55.99, I'm going to say that, that is going to be 56.0, and that is to 1 dp. And that gives us now the, the value right there of this angle. If you want a, a brief look at why this works uh, for sine rule, we'll finish off with that. Let's just draw a triangle. Let's go ahead and draw this triangle. Um, and what we're going to do is just label this up. So what I'm going to do, I just, may as well just look at this before we finish. Let's say that we have now this right here. Let's say we've got uh, this, and I'll call this height h. So what I've got is a non-right angle triangle with some height h. Let's say that this is the angle A and this is the side length A. If I now consider that this is the angle B, so let's put the angle B on here, what we're going to have is the following. This one is going to be B. If we think about basic trig ratios, 
let's say we wanted to find now the opposite. So if I go back to my trig ratios that we saw in a previous tutorial, let's just draw these up, we had now S, O and H. So just putting these on from here. Uh, what we'd have now is the following. We would have the S here. So we've got the S, we've got the O and we've got the H. So if I wanted now the opposite, I could say that H was equal to the sine of this angle multiplied by the hypotenuse, which gives us B sine A. If we look here, I can see now that H in this one, which is the opposite of this right angle triangle, would give us now the sine of the angle, which is sine B, multiplied by the hypotenuse, which would give us now A sine B. So if we look at this, H is equal to B sine A, H is equal to A sine B. Therefore, what we can say from here is that B sine A is equal to A sine B. And of course, from here, we can simply divide both sides by A and both sides by B. So we can say sine A over A is equal to sine B over B. So if you just want to know why that works, that's just a, a sort of bolt on to the end of it. Um, we were only really doing basic examples, but hopefully that gives you some idea of exactly why you're using that. So there we go. That's an introduction now to using the sine rule to find missing lengths and angles in non-right angle triangles.